20. Calculate the solubility of aluminum hydroxide, which is ALOH3, in a solution that's buffered at a pH of 11. Okay, so when they're asking for calculating the solubility, they're really asking to calculate the molar solubility. And when we're looking for a molar solubility, that always comes from the KSP value, right? So I had to look into a back of a textbook to find out what the KSP, the solubility product of aluminum hydroxide is, which is 2.0 times 10 to the negative 32. Now, in order to use the KSP, we first have to write a balanced equation showing that this aluminum hydroxide is going to dissolve into its ions. So here we go. And just to know, a molar solubility is basically the amount um, that's going to basically dissolve in a saturated solution. So let's just find out what the balanced equation is. So we have Al, OH3, and this always starts off as a solid if we're dealing with KSPs. And we have a K value, so I need to see double arrows. And the break between the aluminum hydroxide is between the aluminum and the hydroxide, right? So I have Al and then plus OH. Now we need the charges in the upper right hand corner. There's a couple of ways to do this. You could take these subscripts and crisscross them up. That's like going all the way back to basics. If we do that, the one for the aluminum tells me that the hydroxide was a negative one charge and that's always what hydroxide is. And then the three told me that aluminum was a plus three. You could also find the charges on the periodic table for the aluminum, but the hydroxide has to be memorized. Okay, so now I have aqueous for these because I see charges, and now I'm just gonna quickly uh, balance this. I have three hydroxides, so I need to put a three in front of here, but there's only one aluminum, one aluminum, so we're good. So maybe I will put this maybe off to the side here. That's good enough. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to use this formula to write my KS3 general formula, right? And I wrote it down here. So maybe what I'll do is I'll bring this up. So KSP just equals the concentration of the products raised to the coefficients. So here we go, KSP equals concentration of, we have aluminum, three plus, times the hydroxide concentration. But remember, you just have to make sure that you raise them to their coefficients. There was nothing in front of the aluminum and a three in front of the OH, right? This nothing means that you only had one aluminum. So you could raise this to the first, but nobody, you know, really puts that because it's the same as just not having it. But I definitely need to put a three up there for the hydroxide. So whatever the hydroxide concentration is, I need to cube it. Now the KSP is what, you know, we found at the back of the textbook, 2.0 times 10 to the negative 32. But we don't know what the concentrations of the Al3 plus and the OH minus are, right? So we need to put in variables. But this is where we go back to the question to see if there was any additional information. Now they did say that we were already in a solution that had a pH of 11. So I say to myself, hmm, why did they give me this information? Can I go from a pH, right, this is 11, can I go from a pH to a aluminum concentration? Mm, no. But can I go from a pH to a hydroxide concentration? You got it. This was last chapter, right? And I wrote down the formulas here that are gonna help us. The first thing we have to do is find out what that pOH is. And then we can find out the hydroxide concentration. So let's just move this up. We're now taking this one. Maybe I'll do the math over here. If I wanted to find out the pOH, all I would have to do is subtract the pH value from 14, right? So here we go. pH or pOH equals 14 minus the 11. So the pOH 14 minus 11 is what, 13? Just kidding, <laughs> three. <laughs> Aye. Okay, so we have a pOH of three, so maybe I'll just, you know, erase this. And now we're gonna use this information to go to the next one. 
And now I'm just going to get rid of this. Okay. So the pOH is just going to be inserted into this formula to get my OH minus concentration. So it would just be OH equals 10 to the negative 3.00. So, I mean, if I just wrote it out in scientific notation, it would be 1 times 10 to the negative 3. Right? I don't really have to do any math there. Okay. Now, let me just move this on over, maybe over here. Now, this was the original solution. And it's telling us that I had an initial value of OH minus. Keep in mind that this is molarity, right? And that was the initial concentration. And once you have initial concentrations, you should technically use a ice table. So let's do that. We're going to ice it out, ICE. And... Remember, no solids are allowed, so I'm just going to put a uh, X through the reactants. I didn't have any starting aluminum concentration, so I'm going to say zero. But now I know that I have one times 10 to the negative third concentration starting off for the hydroxide. Now let's add our changes. That's the variable. So this would be plus x, because I have only one of them. And this would be plus 3x. 0 plus x is just x. And then this would be 1 times 10 to the negative 3 plus 3x. These are your values now that are going to go into your KSP. So aluminum, we have x. And hydroxide, we have 1 times 10 to the negative 3rd plus 3x. Now, here we're going to assume, right? Because if we keep this plus 3x, the math is going to get a little crazy. So what we say is the initial concentration is probably not going to change much because our KSP is so low. So that means that the change from initial to final is probably so similar that it's probably going to be 1 times 10 to the negative 3. The change is probably not even going to change that value. So I can just say, let's get rid of this and see if it works. So 2.0 times 10 to the negative 32 equals, we have x and then 1 times 10 to the negative third, and that's cubed. So let's work on this first. So 1 times 10 to the negative third cubed. Duh, right, 1 times 10 to the negative ninth. And then solve for x, I just divide on both sides by 1 times 10 to the negative ninth. There we go. 1 times 10 to the negative ninth. And this will cancel this out. And then let's see. 2 times 10 to the negative 32 divided by 1 times 10 to the negative ninth is, let me just put it here, x equals 2. And, I mean, technically we should have, uh, from here, you have a POH of 3, so 3 sig figs. So, I mean, maybe I'll put the 0 .00, but does anybody care? No. No one cares at this point. At chapter 15, nobody cares. Okay, so my x value is 2 times 10 to the negative 23rd. Now, we just have to make sure that this is uh, acceptable for the 5% rule. So what the 5% rule is, is just to make sure that your approximation is good. What you're going to do is you're going to take your answer and divide it by the initial concentration, which is 1 times 10 to the negative 3, and times by 100. If your answer is 5 or less, we were able to assume that that change was, you know, not great, and we could just take x as our answer. So... 1 to the negative third times 100. Oh, yeah. We're not even at 1%. So we're going to leave that x answer, and we're going to label it as molarity, because that's what we just found. Now, they said calculate the molar solubility. When they're asking for the molar solubility, they're always asking for the compound that started, so the ALOH3, which is this one. But just use your 
mole ratios. Keep in mind that there was only one value. So there was only one X. So even though it wasn't in the ice table, you can still use your mole ratios to, you know, get it over on this side. So I have 2.00 times 10 to the negative 23rd molarity of the AL OH3. And that is your final answer. Not bad. What do you think? I really hope this helped. Let me know in the comments. Subscribe to the channel. And I will, well, I'll, I'll be talking to you. I won't be seeing you, but I'll be talking to you. Well, I'll be talking to a screen, but hopefully uh, hopefully you learn <laughs> from me talking to my screen in a, in a room that's just myself. <laughs> anyway, okay. I will talk to you later. Bye.